Hey guys welcome to rc video reviews tonight it's saturday night and i was just about to break this thing open and start working on the flight computer upgrade and i thought why not live stream it <laughs> um i know that you know I, I i go through a lot of this kind of work you know i'm constantly tinkering with these things and you know in the case of the tyro there's some interesting issues because everything is pre-wired they they had everything set up uh, to take the existing wiring and i'm going to be upgrading to a little flight controller I found at Pyrodrone. This is called a Hi-Fi on RC F7. And um, I've got the spec sheet here. I'll just I'll just give you guys, uh, I had the spec sheet. I must have closed that window. What did I do with it? How about that? I did close that window. Uh, let me bring it back up real quick. Um, but I, I got this one because um, I just had this idea that I wanted a bench flight controller to tinker with. And um, when I started looking at them, I thought, well, instead of just getting a base model one like this, I'll get one that's a little more upgraded, and then I'll use the base model one for my bench testing. That's kind of where I landed. And this Hi-Fi on, on RC is a 60-amp stack, and it's an F7 CPU. And this one, one of the interesting things that caught my attention about this one is it came with the DJI setup right out of the box. So it has a DJI cable if you want to plug an air unit in. And it also has Bluetooth built in. And the first time I did Bluetooth on the Flywoo Mr. Croc, it had one of these little external modules, and I didn't recognize the chip. When I did the first look, I'm like, what the heck is that chip? I saw it, but I didn't recognize it, and I'm not going to be able to get this open. Um, there we go. There we go. So it had one of these little things in it, and I didn't recognize it. I was like, what, what is that? And um, on, on this board, I've already plugged this in the Betaflight, it has the Bluetooth on board and that's kind of what i thought the flywoo mr croc would have anyway so i'll just check in and see how things are coming along and see who's here and then um we'll get started so let's see robert looking forward to this hey robert how you doing buddy uh sean ha hawkins my build is almost done oh are you doing a tyro sean i like this quad this is a really cool quad uh hey drone pilot how you doing my friend uh, Jason Hine, has there been a maiden flight on the Mr. Croc yet? It looks like a uh, drone pilot's been helping out. Yeah. So the, the Mr. Croc, um, I flew it again today after fixing the prop nut and I think it's definitely better, but I'm still not quite satisfied. So I'm going to do a little bit more work, but I think, I think it might work out. We'll see. I'm, I'm still cautiously optimistic at this point. Um, but the first couple flights, if you guys watch the pilot jam, you know that I found a prop nut that had the nylon was offset on the prop nut, so I was getting, I'm pretty sure that was one of the main causes of the vibration. Um, John jinxed himself when he said he had the prop nuts for the cry. Yeah, I guess I did, man. I ordered a bag of 30, and I guess my quads are going to make me burn them up, right? Anyway, and one other thing I wanted to show you guys uh, real quick, too, um, before I get started, is this. Um, there's a YouTube channel out there called Project Farm, and the guy's got, he's got some, I don't know, if, I don't know if I'd say industrial, but he's got some of that street knowledge when it comes to manufacturing, you know, garage mechanic, shade tree mechanic kind of knowledge. And uh, his, he does, he puts a video up, he gets, you know, millions of views. So it's called Project Farm. And he did, he did a video on double-sided tape and he goes through these whole, you know, these battery tests and it's real, it's not scientific in, in the sense that he's not busting out, you know, high, high end lab grade gear. He just does real practical experiments with the stuff. It's kind of like what I do. Um, and he, he mentioned this tape, it's called LPT. It's LPT uh, foam, double-sided foam tape. And he measured against all the other stuff. He measured it against the, uh, like the gorilla tape and the 3M stuff. And this crushed them all. It, it beat them all like redhead stepchildren. And it's cheap. You can get it on Amazon. It's called LPT. It's double-sided foam tape. And uh, I got a roll of it. I'm going to try it out. Um, double-sided tape, for, if for some reason I go through a lot of it. But anyway, 
All right, let's get to work. So um, tonight, if if you've never you know joined for one of these kinds of deals, it's just it's just a nothing formal. You know, I'm not focused on like production stuff. I, I'm you know this is just kind of like a BS session to be honest. It's like hanging out in the garage and tinkering on the car. You know, that's kind of the way I look at these these types of sessions. Um, just like hanging out in the garage and tinkering on the car. So don't expect high production value, and hopefully we'll finish the job. Maybe we won't. We'll see. We'll try. But I figured, um, yeah, like I said, we'll just pop this video up and and uh, maybe learn something. Maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll learn something. We'll, we'll see. Try and figure it out. Now the other thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to change out the VTX. And it's not that it's not that I had a problem with the VTX in terms of um, whether or not it performed once it was working. It, it works. You know, I don't want to I don't want to mislead you guys. But one of the things that I didn't like about it was, and maybe that's why they didn't include the, uh, maybe it's why they didn't include the smart audio cable for it, is because when you change channels via smart audio, it goes staticky. And I didn't really care for that. Not that, not, not that I sit there and flip channels around when I'm flying. That's not what I do. But I just, it just seems off to me. You know, it's one of those things that should be right, but it's not right kind of deal. So this is another thing that I'll probably just save for the bench. And I've got another one that I'm going to try. Um, and it's a Zylo. It's a Zylo. I can't read the thing on it. It is a Zylo, though. It's got smart audio. Zylo Stacks is what it says. So Zylo Stacks. So that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace it with that one. And I've already done some testing with this one, so I expect it should work okay. I've also, as you can tell, I've already stripped a few things off just because who cares about seeing props come off, right? So GPS, and this is what I mean, this quad, this flight computer on this quad goes together really easily. Um, that's one of the things I really do, did like about it is how simple it was to put this together. So if you have no experience um, putting these together, um, it definitely was simple. It was not a tough, the stack was not a tough build on this quad. It, it goes together really well. So a couple of reasons for this one. I mentioned the Wi-Fi. It's an F7 board. This one also has a barometer and it has a current sensor. So <laughs> we sat on Discord fiddling around. I mean, you know, we're looking at all kinds of stuff. We're trying different calibrations. Like, why won't this thing calibrate? <laughs> Could not get the thing to calibrate. No current sensor on it. Ugh. Well, they... In my defense, the specs didn't show very much about whether or not it had a current sensor either. So I'll throw that out there. Okay, first soldering work has to be undone. The receiver has to come off. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take a picture of this so I don't have to go back and look it up later. So I've got... You guys can... help. help someone write this down. Yellow on the receiver. This is the Express LRS receiver. Yellow goes to TX. Green goes to RX. So help me. Help me out. Someone take a note of that. <laughs> Remind me, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna get a picture of it. So that way I can, that way I don't have to bother looking up the diagram for the receiver. All right, I'm just gonna take this guy off the board down here. And if you didn't know, this is an Express LRS receiver on here. So I'll be sticking with that. We're st that's staying in, that's gonna stay in the quad. That's not coming off. We're, st we're staying with the Express LRS. So there we go. That was fast. Kind of got down to the bottom pretty quick. Um, I don't know how fun that's going to be to get out without taking the whole back piece off here. So I guess that's going to have to come off. Hoping to avoid that. Let me. I'm going to check comments. I'll flip over in comments. Try and keep an eye on what's going on. David Knut, the David Knuts. He made it. How about that, David? How you doing? Shadow of Chaos eighty nine. Hello, Robert. We fly by the seat of our pants. That's right. Or wing it. Yeah, yeah. We're winging it. I was looking at the same VTX, my wish list on rate race day quads and get FPV is 200 items. On both. Uh, son, you've got a condition. Remember that from the Avengers when the Hulk fell from the, from the ship, they, <laughs> he said, did I hurt anybody? And, and, uh, the old man said, Nope. He said, are, are you an alien? And he said, uh, no. He goes, well then son, you've got a condition. <laughs> I thought that was one of the best lines. That, that series had a lot of good lines in it, but I thought that was particularly strong. Son, you've got a condition. Oh, are you going to be stubborn or are you going to come out? You're going to come out of there. You're going to be stubborn. 
these uh this is a TPU print and it's definitely being stubborn does not want to come off hmm I don't you, the problem is you know you guys know what the problem is right you don't want to jerk on it because if you pull and rip you're, you inevitably you're going to catch some wire you didn't mean to you didn't mean to catch and that's going to create a problem so that's always the issue with this type of thing all right everything the wires are all attached so i should be able to come on you gotta play nice here come off how to make room to get the power wire off the back tpu man that's coming off in a crash i don't think so okay there we go <laughs> robert robert i was doing the radio review the e-sheen robert said that i got entrails hanging out all over the place i'll tell you what buddy <laughs> got some entrails on this poor uh, tyro right now hanging out okay we're almost there done with the strip down so hopefully we make quick work of this tonight we'll see let's see here Ripping and tearing is my favorite part, yeah. Red, yellow is TX, green is RX. No fooling around on that. I don't want to tear it apart and resolder it, Robert. I gotta, I gotta watch Robert. I'm gonna need some confirmation on that. Okay, um, so that's that's done. Let's just take the we'll take the uh, motor wires off now. I really don't want to cut them because they're short already, and I, I really what I'd like to try and do if I can avoid it is I don't I don't really want to uh take the heat shrink off and 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 have to solder them that way. I'd rather leave everything in place and just switch the new ESC in directly and not not fiddle with the uh the wires. So that's the objective. That's why I'm not just going to cut them. I want to preserve as much of that wire length as I can. Oh, that was a that was a solder burn waiting to happen. Come on. All right. Let's see. I just want to make sure I'm keeping things in frame for you guys. Okay. Yeah, that looks okay. Um, Freddie says, ripping and tearing is my favorite part. You like stripping? You like the, what do they call that in the home renovations? You like the tear down? You like the breakdown? Phase. I like putting it together. I like seeing it work. That's one of the things that's kind of enjoying about these quads. Is there's a little bit of complexity, you know. I think I've mentioned to you guys in the past that I came from a tech, you know, tech background, and seeing the technology in these things to me has always been impressive. I've always enjoyed that. Uh, let's see. Getting a green light on my smoke saver after repairs. My yeah, yeah, that's true too. That reminds me, I'll have to get mine out. That's a good call, Shet. Thanks for reminding me. I gotta get mine out. Get the, whoops, it's trying to get me. It's trying to bite me. There's one. Yeah, getting a green light on the smoke saver after build. That's always yeah. That's very enjoyable, right? I like those smoke savers. I kind of, I kind of wish that I would have had one of those from the start. They make a they make a lot of sense to me, and you know I know you can do it with a continuity checker. People people say that in comments, but there's just something fun about having one. All right, okay, that's it. The uh, <laughs> the patient's <laughs> the patient's heart has been removed. Now I have to figure out what I'm going to do about putting the new one together. I I I couldn't really do much until I got it torn apart. So the uh, the new stack, you know, it's got it's got the bolts, and this one will work. I could probably just put it back together the same way I took it apart, I suppose. But I was looking for a way to to do the isolation. Um, so I kind of thought that I'd like to use the uh, the bolts that came with the flight stack. But I can tell you right now, um, they're in the, they're not even going to be close. But they might be able to get at least the flight stack isolated, and then I can use one of these standoffs. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. What I'm, what I'm aiming for is I'd like to use the bolts that came with this because I'd like to isolate the controller. That's what I'm interested in doing is using the isolators. And um, these, these uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, but I'm going to try. So we'll try. If it doesn't work, then I'll use the standoffs, but I'd kind of like to use the isolators if I can. I like I like isolating the flight computers. It's always 
to me that's always the right answer so we'll try and I think these are definitely shorter drone pilot says I never use the bolts that come with the stacks personally yeah I don't know why why not I uh yeah these are definitely too short so I don't know why why is there a problem that I'm not aware of they bad metal is that the problem I'm gonna try it. That's what I have. This I don't think I have any uh, screws this size that are uh, threaded correctly, and they're this long. That's my problem. So I'll have to run. I'll have to run with what I have. That's one thing because I'm kind of new in the quad space, as I don't have a big stash of quad parts yet. Yeah, I have the bolts of the right lengths. That's the thing. David says all electronics run on smoke. If you let it out, it won't work. Yeah, I've <laughs> I've definitely had my fair share of letting the smoke run out. That's for sure. I can still fit a battery strap, etc. Okay. Well, like I said, we're gonna try this. I, I'll get away with some of it, and like I said, at some point I may have to re revert to the uh, may have to revert to the uh, standoffs, but. If that's the case, then that's the case. That'll be fine. If you guys didn't notice, you know, I'm doing one at a time because that way, if I take them all out, then you got alignment issues and the, you know, I figure just doing one at a time, it'll make my life easier. Keep everything lined up while I swap them. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. In case you're wondering. Uh, Shadow of Chaos says $10 saver for 200 qu Yeah, man, I agree. And that's kind of why I kick myself for not having one in the past is that it is totally worth it. It's a few bucks. And if you ever smoke a flight computer, that'll... <laughs> and uh, I think I have. I think I have. So maybe not a flight computer, but I know I smoked other stuff. So if you let the smoke out of something um, one time, it pretty much pays for itself. So yeah, I agree. They're they're worth the worth the money. But you can you can do, you know, you can do a continuity test too, by the way. It's really the same. I think that's what they're doing. Jason Hines says, I'm sorry, did you name what board it is? I'm a little behind on the video still. That's all right, Jason. It's a um it's a hi-fi on RC F7 and it's sold by Pyrodrone. I got it from Pyrodrone. And um yeah, it's called here. I'll put the I'll put the label up, let you guys see it. Here it is. Here's the bag. It's a Hi-Fi on RC F7 Max V3. And um, I think they only sell the V3s, but pay attention because there is a V2. And, you know, I guess we always want the latest, right? I know I do. So I would have been annoyed if I got the V2 and then found out later on their website they had a V3. I would have been like Homer, right? Don't. So anyway, yeah, there's a... Um, I don't really have any experience with these boards. I've never used one before, but you know, the reviews on it on Pyrodrone were pretty positive. So I decided to try it. And like I said, it has, this one has a barometer. It has the, um, current sensor and what else? Oh, the wife, the Bluetooth. And I did check the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth. I got to tell you guys, man, the Bluetooth, if, if you're not, if you're not hip to that yet, the Bluetooth modules on these things are kind of cool because when you when you have Bluetooth, if you're flying the quad and you land, you can bust out your phone, open up SpeedyB, connect real fast to Bluetooth, and you can make a make a modification and then save and reboot and then rearm the quad and off you go. And you don't you don't have to take you don't have to do anything. You don't have to take the battery off, you don't have to you don't have to do anything. So it's kind of kind of a cool little cool little deal. So I'm I'm uh, I got a couple of more. Uh, Pyrodrone also sells these little flywood Bluetooth modules, so you can add them to you can add them you can add them to boards that don't have them, and these are only like seven dollars. So now, you know that said, I, I reckon that you know when it comes to using Betaflight to configure quads, hopefully once you get things set, you're probably not spending too much time in there. But if you do have a quad you like to tinker with or that you want to change the PIDs on all the time, or you know that you're troubleshooting, maybe that'd be a good resource to have. Sure, certainly makes life easier. Okay, um, so that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and try the ESC first, and I'm gonna leave the flight computer off. And 
the ESC, the back of the quad, that's the front. This, nope, that's the back. This is the back. Kind of important to get this part right, isn't it, John? All right. So this is the back of the quad. That's the front. And that should just slide on there just like that. Now I want to see, is this going to fit? Nope, that's not going to fit. So that means the isolators have to come off the... They're going to have to come off the ESC, but I can't, I don't want them sitting directly on the wall, on the uh, press nuts down there. Those are press nuts. So I don't want them sitting on that, obviously. And I don't really care if the ESC is isolated as much. That's less of a concern to me, but it can't sit on metal. So I'll take the isolators off. And what I'm going to do is take these plastic nuts and I'm going to spin a couple of these down on there. And um, hopefully that will give me. It'll certainly do electronic isolation from the press nuts, so I don't have to worry about anything there. I mean, you shouldn't have to worry about it anyway, but why why risk it, right? For for the price of one small plastic nut, it's no longer a concern. I don't know if these do you guys know? Do you guys know if those holes conduct? They shouldn't. I don't reckon they do. It doesn't look like they do. I don't see traces to anything, but you know. They can have internal, right? They can, there, there can be, these are multi-layer PCBs these days. You can flip them and make it closer to the frame, says Chris. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is definitely reversible. Oh, I just noticed they have motor labels on there too. They've got M1, M2, M M3, and M4. That's cool. By the way, that tape is LLPT double-sided tape. Yeah, David, that, that was another thing. It was cheap. Man, it's ridiculously cheap, the tape. That LLPT tape is definitely cheap. Hmm. Well, now the problem is that flops around. So let's see. Let's see what happens. I know how to solve that. I know how to solve that. Okay. Well, that, that looks like it'll work. I'll have to put these on for the for the video. So I think that'll work. We'll just you just gotta compress it a little bit. It's gonna have to be compressed just a touch. But that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I think that'll work. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Um, FYI, the uh, the DFU that kind of sucks a little bit. I just noticed that the DFU. If you gotta get into DFU mode on this, it's right there. So just throwing that out there. Okay, I think that'll do. I think it'll do the job. Um, so I can compress this just enough. It'll keep that ESC from flopping around. And I've got isolation for the flight controller board. So everything's good there. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to just take this back off now and we'll solder the ESC wires or the motor wires onto the ESC. And then uh, we'll press forward. LLPT double sided tape 1059. Yeah, that 50 50 but I was so impressed with the price too and that that guy like I said project farm I mean he he pretty much tortures the stuff, right? He he goes through it. <laughs> Believe me. He beats it up pretty bad <laughs> And he goes yeah, this LLPT really impressed me um, So there we go. All right. Well, hey, I don't know if Jerry's gonna pop in but Jerry's Jerry's made it clear he's watching and if I don't use flux when I'm supposed to use flux, he's gonna tell me about it. So let's get some flux on the on the pads so I can tin them up the right way. So lots of flux, make everybody happy. I need to get the freaking flux in a pen. I know you guys are probably gonna say you gotta get the flux in the pen. I know, I know, I know, I know. I need to get it. You know what kills me is I was just in Pyrodrone and they have the TBX uh, solder uh, pen, the 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 syringe with flux in it. They have it, and I didn't get it. Should have gotten it. Kind of kind of annoyed that I didn't. I think I'm just gonna steal. No, I'm gonna use the capacitor they give me. I don't want to mess with that, but I'll probably steal the pigtail off the other board. Because this board doesn't it doesn't need it anymore. I'll see if I I'll see how hard that's gonna be to get that off there. I really don't feel like soldering an XT60 tonight. Not in the mood. Not to mention, without my helping hands, those are a pain in the neck to solder. Let's get this off first.
You know what? I don't mind cutting this one. I'm just going to cut it. There's no, it's not that critical. There we go. And I will use the capacitor. They did give a capacitor with the new board, so I'll just go ahead and use that. I'll just use that. And then, uh, okay, the stripe. You guys, make sure you get that right. The stripe is ground. If you don't get that right, you'll know it. <laughs> you'll know it real fast. You ever hear a capacitor pop? Um, they'll tell you. If you if you get the they are polarized, so if you don't get your capacitor right, it will tell you. It's gonna slow down now because now we have to read and we have to we have to see what the connections are supposed to be. And here there's the <laughs> there's the flux for tinning. Um I gotta be honest, I don't use flux for everything. If it and I don't know. I don't know if this, I don't know if this Kester solder has a flux core or not. I know some of them do. I don't think this stuff does though. I'm not sure, but whatever. I'll just avoid, I'll avo avoid it as a question just by, I don't have this position right. I'll avoid it as a question just by using the flux and that way it's not a problem. There we go. So just tend that up a little bit. We'll tend this one up a little bit. There we go. And we'll tin the board just a little bit. I don't know what the deal is with this gap in between the two. That seems kind of weird to me. Maybe they mean for you to lay the, the wire in that gap, I guess. I don't know. That seems kind of weird. I'm trying to, if you guys see me kind of fidget with these, what I'm trying to do is I don't like the idea of putting my iron over the chip. So to me, that's not a great idea because those chips, you can, you can move them pretty easy. It doesn't take much. So I try and avoid putting my iron directly over the top of those surface mounted chips. That's kind of the objective. Okay. There's plus and minus. We'll just go ahead and lay this guy on there. I'm going to shorten it just a little. That's too long. Doesn't need to be that long. So we'll shorten those legs just a little bit. So the capacitor. Remember what I said, don't don't make the mistake of messing up the polarity on these. They will tell you. Pop. Okay. Oh. There you go. Now you're on there. I saw, I've seen a couple of uh, XT60 pigtails with the capacitors connected. I've been thinking about grabbing a couple of those too try those out because even though this has the capacitor i still hear it uh especially when you connect 6s man i can really hear it by the way i did get a chance if you guys are if you didn't know if you missed it i did get a chance to fly the uh uh the sector 5 with the uh 6s you know and using that rate profile switching deal and that worked it worked it worked really well i was really happy with that's a such a cool that's such a cool little thing so if, if you're out in the market buying quads 
don't <laughs> don't i mean if all if you know all you're ever going to do is fly success then go ahead and get success but um i was you know in my case i was uh i'll just show you guys real quick there's the the stripe i was talking about and there's the ground so make sure you make sure you get those lined up because if you don't the polarity and i actually checked just to make sure because um here's the original one there's the capacitor and there's the ground and there's the positive so yeah just make sure you get that right because it'll pop but anyway if, if you if you know all you're ever going to fly is success and of course just get success and be done with it but the uh thing that was cool about getting the um oh shoot i gotta tin all those uh motor pads the thing that was cool about that was that all my 4s quads that i have because i had 4s batteries and um now i can i can use uh now i can use uh 6s batteries on those same quads and fly them either way so there we go i can cycle through them let's see great for servo ground uh by the way yeah the great yeah the lp have you used this lpt david or is that what you're referring to have you used this stuff before um i'm anxious to try it man he, he his uh pro project farm his his video showed this stuff holding out pretty tough so i'm anxious to try it so great for servos and you can set dfu and cli yeah robert I, yeah i know and i'm just throwing it out there um in case people want to know where the button is in fact um it seems in beta flight you don't even need to go in dfu anymore you can it'll just automatically like if you if you go into flash firmware it just automatically um opens up in the right mode you guys see what i mean about this kester man look how pretty that is isn't that nice this kester solder let me zoom in a little so you guys can get a better look i love this kester solder if you need if you need good solder this kester stuff it definitely gets my endorsement and this stuff is really good it just leaves this beautiful silver blob every time every time beautiful Um, but anyway, yeah, Robert, a lot of times, it, well, not a lot of times, Betaflight, when you need to flash firmware in Betaflight, it'll just automatically go into DFU mode for you when you say flash. So, but you know, it's there, it's on the board for a reason. So I was just pointing it out, let people know where it, where it lives. That's all. There you go. The boards are, boards 10 now for the, for the ESC. And, um, hopefully that should make short work of that I keep putting this on backwards the camera that go that's the camera up front I, I keep looking at this backwards this is correct this is the back of the quad that's the front okay now I can solder my motor wires on here and I'm gonna look for the longest one and 3m is a dollar a foot oof yeah, and I don't think I don't remember his results. Uh, it's hard. It's hard because he does so many things. You know, he tests so many products at one time. So I don't I don't remember uh, all of his results, but I do remember that the. Uh, I, I'm just going to put a couple screws to hold this thing down because I'm going to be soldering on it and I don't want it moving around. But his. Uh, yeah, I think I remember the name. Some of the name brand ones that I thought were really good were getting crushed by this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think 3m was i definitely do think 3m was one of them for sure i think it was tester solder is the best and it has a rosin core for no clean flux okay so it does have a rosin core i wasn't sure um i've had i don't see where it says that it says no clean maybe that's what you're talking about maybe no clean right there so hmm okay Well, there we go, Jerry. So I've had flux all along. How about that? Okay. Boy, that's close. I knew it was going to be close, man. That's why I did not want to cut these things. I knew that was going to... That's the longest one, too. Yep. Dang, man. That is so close. Oof. Ah. Not happy. That is so close. All right, it's on there. 
flux is Jerry. <laughs> Jerry got me, man. He's like, flux, 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 flux. <laughs> electronics, guys. You know, drone pilot's an electronics guy, and he doesn't use flux. He's like, eh, I don't use flux for waters. Right? Okay. There's two. I know this has got to be about as exciting as watching dried paint, but you know, you got to do it. This has to be done. We can't skip this one. That was much better. Much better bead on that one. Okay. I know, I, I know I'm violating my own rule about crossing over the chips, but I just don't see any other way to do it with all the stuff on the board. So I'm just going to be careful. And uh, definitely going to come in at a high angle, that's for sure. Okay, shortest one in. We'll do that first. Oh, let me get back on frame here for you guys. Okay. Hey, let me mention something else to you guys too. If you didn't know this, when you're soldering this kind of stuff on, it's real easy to let the solder be the medium that, that connects, but you really don't want that. You, you really want to push the wire onto the pad. Um, I know solder has good con conductivity, but that doesn't change the fact that you really need to get the, you got to get the, boy, you got to get the uh, wire on that pad. Uh, that gives you the best uh, connectivity and the lowest amount of resistance. So don't, you know, what I'm saying is don't let it, don't let it um, levitate in the solder, right? You got to get it on the pad. You don't want it suspended in the solder. That's what I'm trying to say. You don't want it suspended in the solder. Get that, get that wire touching that copper pad on the, on the plate. Because that'll just, oh, these, these middle ones are so close, man. God bless, they're close. And I did not cut these either. Okay, almost there. Just a couple more. You need some alligator forceps. Yeah, I probably should, man. I probably should get some alligator forceps. There's always one more tool, you know what I mean? Always one more. Mm. It's hot too, boy. Michael says, I love the building process. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things I think that people in this hobby uh, all have in common is we like to tinker with things, you know, that's, I love to tinker with stuff. I love to, I love to make stuff work. I always have. It's just kind of, I've always enjoyed that. You know, when I was a teenager, I used to be really heavy into cars. And, um, one time <laughs> I bought a, uh, I bought a, uh, a Malibu. It was a, it was a Malibu wagon. It was like a, it was like a 70, I want to say it was a 76 Malibu wagon and, and it had, it had three back seats and one of the back seats faced aft. It faced aft. And, uh, um, we used to, every, every time we got together as a group, you know, the group of friends, we always took my car cause I could carry everybody, everybody, all the girls, all the boys, you know, and uh, we'd always go in my car because it was big enough to carry everybody. Well, not always, but frequently, frequently. Anyway, um, <laughs> when I bought that car, I also got my hands on a 72 Impala. And that 72 Impala had, you know, one of the big buzzwords we used to say back then when I was a teenager was, um, you know, 350 with four bolt mains, four bolt mains. Everyone wanted the four, four bolt mains mattered because they had, they were so strong. So I got that 72 Impala and it had a 350 with four bolt mains. And um, we decided to take that motor out of that car because the car was a piece of junk. Uh, but the motor, uh, the motor had some value. So we decided to take it out. And, you know, I was, I was like 16, 16, 17 years old. Um, all I had is hand tools. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a garage with, with uh, 
you know, things like a cherry picker and all that stuff. So we, um, uh, we ended up taking that motor out of the car and we did it by using a come along strapped to a tree. And, um, we got the motor out right in time for my mom to come home from work and she pulls in and she sees this big V8 Chevy motor hanging from, hanging from the tree in a, in our front yard. Uh, it was something else. Well, I'll tell you the stuff we did as teenagers. She wasn't amused, by the way, and I can only imagine what our neighbors must have thought. They must have thought uh, they were living next to a bunch of idiots. So anyway, all right, now let's see here. We've got all the stuff now. So we've got we've got to do the receiver. Uh, it was at, Robert it was actually the same. It was they were both three fifties, but uh, and they were small block Chevys, so it was just the four bolt main. I don't even remember what we did with the block, to be honest with you. I think we took the block to our to our high school, and uh, I was taking auto mechanics, and I think we machined it, so it was fun. Uh, let's see, ceramic tweezers are nice. Also, try chop those yellow grommets to get the ESC some cushion and still keep the stack height in check. Yeah. It's it's on now, man. I'm not. <laughs> I have to desolder all these wires. I'm gonna. We're gonna run it. I'm gonna run it the way I got it. The ESC will be fine. I, I'm. I don't mind. I think the ESC will be fine. The last one had no cushion. It was directly directly on there, so it'll be okay. I'm not worried. Um, absolutely keeps me busy. I was in the cars. I had a '70 Dodge Challenger. I wish I had them. Telling. I know, right? Now, if I had half the cars that I sold when I was a kid, I'd probably be a millionaire at this point. Um, I've seen stuff go across the auction block that just brings a tear to my eye. I had a 78 Trans Am that was actually in pretty good condition. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, let's see here. It's time to go to work. Stop BSing. Let's go. All right. The video transmitter, uh, the receiver. We got the crossfire. We got the compass. I guess the compass, I'm going to have to, I got the compass where that one's going to have to, I'm going to have to chop the wires, the wire off of that one. Cause it's got the, uh, wait, what is that? What is that thing? It's got a, uh, I'm looking at the diagram and it's got this one for the DJI and it's got this thing. And I don't know what that's for. Kind of looks like it would fit a compass wire though, doesn't it? Huh, about that. Okay, so what is it? It is for is it for the compass? There's something on the back side. It shows the compass being soldered onto the pads, but it, it doesn't it doesn't say what that is for. U3 T6. Well, I wonder. I kinda I got I kinda get leery about that because if you get the pins wrong your toast and of course on these compasses they don't that's the other thing on these compasses they do not respect convention when it comes to hot i'm pretty sure that i actually pulled the wires out of here but i'm gonna have to no i never had a mullet man i never had a mullet i'm gonna have to uh i need to check the wiring diagram on this compass to make sure that i have these these wires relocated i'm pretty sure that i actually did do that but this board has this uh it has this, I don't, I got to put this in frame so you guys can see it. Let me zoom out a little bit so I don't miss as much. Whoops, wrong way. Here we go. I'll show you what I'm looking at. There we go. That's better. So the, the board, um, so you notice the board has this uh, pin connector right here, and that is for the DJI. It's got another pin connector here that's not documented, but I believe that's intended to be the compass. I believe that's what they intend. Um, and I'm going to make sure I have it spun around the right way. I don't think I have this spun around the right way. I don't think I do. No, I don't. That, that's spun the correct way. So that's a video, t that's a VTX. The compass, they, they say the compass goes here. That's VTX. Okay, good. I'm glad I spent the extra moment looking at that. I had it rotated wrong. I kept thinking this was the pin header for the DJI, but it's not. It's this. So... They use colors. They got me with colors. I kept, I was focusing on this color, and I thought, okay, well, that's this one, but it's not. That's the alignment. So this says DJI HD. So if you, that can't be right. The DJI HD. Oh, okay. I see it. 
this goes into the camera, that goes into DJI. So that's the receptacle for that. Then what is this? This must be, I don't know what this thing is for. Hmm. Camera, all right, I got it. I got the layout. So all I need to do is check my wiring diagram. Give me just a second, I'm gonna pop in to uh, where I got this wiring, this uh, GPS. I got it at Amazon. This is a BN220 and um, I'm just gonna check the uh, the wiring diagram to make sure I, I don't cross my wires up. So, um, BN220, GPS. Of course, none of my searches are working. All right, here we go. Oh, you know what? This is the one that came, this is the one that came with it. This is the one, I did not buy this on Amazon. This came with, but I'm going to trust that it's the same wiring diagram. I'm going to go with it. Okay, so the way this looks is number one is ground. So that's correct. And I, that means I did do it. Yellow is TX. Green is RX and red is voltage. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside for now. I'll move it so I can see everything on the screen here. And we'll just cut this off. We'll just cut. And here's another little little tip I'll share with you guys. If you do cut these off, don't don't cut right here. I know you may want all that wire, but a lot of times you wind up with more wire than you know what to do with, and it winds up being a mess inside anyway. So just but if you just cut it, you know, down a little bit from the connector, you can still use this connector for other stuff. So just throwing that out there. Um, I don't ever cut them. I don't cut them right at the tip, but I'll cut them at the end and just save that. So we'll just start with the GPS and get this wired. Um, no mullet. Actually, when I had the Trans Am, I was actually in the military. I bought that and sold it while I was in the military. So I never did have a mullet with the Trans Am. Uh, this is, Robert, this is the uh, V3. So Robert says, what, what board is this? This is the Hi-Fi on RC F7 Max V3 right there, V3. So, um, yeah, you know what? You're right, Jason. Jason says that's for the ESC. That's what it is. In fact, here's the row of pins if you're going to solder directly. So they've got VCC, ground, RX1, current, M4, M3. So yeah, that's for the that's for the ESC. Thanks for that. I don't know. Get a little tunnel vision. You're trying you're trying to figure figure where does this thing go, and you want it to go somewhere. You know what I was you know what was going on was I I really wanted to put the GPS in there, so I didn't have to cut it and solder it. That's what was happening mentally. Just so you know. Okay. I need my little hot plate here. We're just gonna tin up these GPS wires real fast, and then we'll tin up the pads, and we'll get that soldered on there. Up oh, flux. <laughs> flux. Boink. There we go. Got flux. All right. I haven't seen Bill in a while. I haven't seen Bill Cox. Anyone heard from Bill? Okay. Those are soldered. Uh, Gamer Drones, I just tuned in. I'm building a 4-inch pod racer with 1805-20. Ooh, 2550. Move. That sounds sprightly. Is that a word? Sprightly? Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> okay. Um This is saying, boy, the label is do I have the I have the layout right? Nope. I tried to do it again. You guys see that? Okay, there we go. So ground 5 volt SDA SEL for compass. There's no compass on this one. So we just need R5 and T5. Okay. So GPS is five. We'll need to remember that. All right, let's tin that up. We'll tin this one up, and we'll get this get this thing uh, get the GPS connected. Okay. Um, five for the GPS. Gotta remember that. Um, I'm, I know I'm not, I don't have to tin the, 
SCA and SCL pads, but I did anyway. Only takes a second. Okay, so we have ground up top right there. There's ground. And I'll zoom in a little so you guys can see. The zooming is a double-edged sword because I want you guys to be able to see what's happening, but on the other hand, it's I wind up getting things out of frame real easy. Okay, so there's ground. Here is 5 volt. Boy, that's a lot of water on that guy. Okay. And let's see, R5 and T5. All right, so let's go back to my little diagram here. And I have T is pin number two. That's the one that is next to ground. So that's yellow. Yellow is T, so yellow needs to go to R. So yellow, what you're looking for is you find the TX on your GPS, and that, I'm gonna verify again, that's the second pin. So black, yellow is the second pin. So that is TX, and that needs to go to RX on the UART. Okay, so that should be correct. There's that one, and there is the RX. So RX is pin number three, and that's going to TX on the board. Okay, that's satisfactory. And then, um, the other thing, it's a good idea to twist just to help with uh, what is, is it EMF? Is that what it's backflow EMF that helps prevent that? But normally when it comes to FPV equipment, I twist everything, everything. Okay, there's the receiver now or the uh, GPS. Now let's take a look at. I am a lefty. I am a lefty. Yep, I am definitely a lefty, guys. Let's take a look at the. Uh, Receiver, all right. Receiver, this is it basically is crossfire. So we're going to make sure we have our alignment right. That's good. And then the crossfire is going to go here. So this is TX, RX, 5 volt, and ground. Okay, that looks okay to me. So we will put some flux on. Okay, a little bit of flux. Let's tin these guys up. Okay. Okay, there's that. And now, who's got the, yeah, okay, Robert's on it. Yellow is TX, green is RX. All right, Robert, thanks, buddy. All right, let's see. We'll do ground first. And then voltage, that's red. Okay, and then yellow, which one is TX? That's the inner one, so RX, that is the green wire, so RX, that will go next to the ground, okay. We'll just connect that guy next, right here. You don't do this much soldering on fixed wing, that's for sure, but I don't mind. Oh, crap, I'm bridging. I got too much. Too much. There we go. And here we go. The yellow. 
that one goes to TX, and I'm going to verify, yeah, TX is close to the, the grommet. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, there's the receiver, and what's next? Oh, the camera, and the VTX. All right, the VTX, that one, where's VTX go? That one goes right next to the receiver. So the receiver is here, VTX is here. Okay, um, let's see, is anyone else sick of not being able to buy Crossfire RXs anywhere just for a split second? I thought about trying Express. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm out of shot, Robert. I'm sorry, guys. Dang it. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm doing Express LRS. In fact, this is Express LRS. This is an Express LRS 915. That's what this is. This is a, uh, the hat, this is the happy model, uh, 915 ES 915 RX. And I got this from get FPV. Although this one is so popular right now that it's hard to get your hands on. So a little crazy, a little crazy. But yeah, um, yeah, you know, Jason, you're not wrong about that. The, the video aspect on DJI, once, once you get the stupid goggles activated, I mean, it's easier, but I really wish they'd s stop with the inane activation, login, firmware, you know, I just leave me alone. I don't, I don't, eh, I don't like it. I don't like being badgered about it. Okay. I got to tin these. So here we go. Let's just tin these up real quick. There's video. 10 volt. Hmm. Okay. 10 volt ground. I mean, that doesn't. And that, this one should be smart audio. This says RXD TX. Yeah, that's smart audio. Okay. And this Xylo does support smart audio, by the way. So we're good with that. Okay, because I'm using this as a... Uh, because I'm using this on a flight computer, I don't need the camera attached to the VTX. So I'm going to go ahead and, and desolder that now. I used... I did this for testing. I was testing this one to make sure it worked the way I wanted it to. So... Just take that off there and save that camera for something else. Whoops, not lens down. Okay, so now um, let's see. I need a VTX wire. Hmm. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find myself a little VTX wire. I have the ground. Yeah, I need to get a VTX wire. Huh? Dang it. All right. Well, that's all right. So let's just do. I'll wire these up first. Here we go. There is the 10 volt. And then there's the ground. And I'm going to have to go get myself a VTX wire. So I don't have one. I don't have one on the table that I can use. I'm kind of surprised about that, actually. All right, guys, you're going to I'll tell you what, let's take us. Let's take a station break. Let me um, let me just pop up a station break. Why don't you do <laughs> China number one? Yeah, they just sold out on MBD. Um, yeah, the, but you know, they're coming back though. Uh, they're coming back. And in fact, uh, I can tell you guys that Banggood has the Express LRS 2.4 stuff because mine is on the way. And when I first, I got the uh, 2.4 transmitter right away. They shipped that right away. But the, uh, the 2.4, uh, sorry, the 2.4 receiver took a little while, but they finally shipped that. So that's on the way. Anyway, we have to take a station break so I can go get some wire, but this would be a good moment, good time to take, I think we've been working on it for about an hour, so this would be a good good time to get up, stretch your legs, smoke them if you got them, and I don't have my, I don't have my, uh, I'm, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, I don't have my, uh, my station break uh, screen on this one, so let me just add some text, and we'll, I'll just, I'm just going to put station break up here. And so if anyone pops in or, you know, they're not strictly paying attention to the video, they'll know that we're on a quick little station break. So let me pop that up. I think you guys can see that. We'll do station break. Um, 
I'm gonna I'll be back in just a minute. I gotta go get some wire so I can do a VTX connection to this to this VTX. So a smart audio and I need smart audio and VTX connection. So I need to do both. So come back in five minutes and uh, smoke them if you got them. And we'll get started again in five. All right, I'm back. I found some wire. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised I didn't have that handy. But here's what we're looking for. We just need to be able to do uh, a wire for VTX. So we need something to go from the flight computer from the flight computer 
OSD system, you know, the camera goes into the flight computer and then you go out from the flight computer to the video TX. And what I didn't have is a wire that would connect the video stream from the flight computer to the VTX to go out. So that's a problem. Anyway, I have it now. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect that. I'm going to tin these up real fast. Little flux, little flux, flux. Everybody gets flux. And then those are already tinned on, on, the, on the VTX. So I'm going to zoom out. It's a real pain in the neck making sure I get this balance between zoom so you guys can see and making sure I stay in frame. Kind of a, kind of a challenge because you, you look down and start focusing on the work, you know? All right. Gamer Drones, everyone take care. Have a great weekend. Got to get some sleep. I'll finish my build tomorrow. Thanks. Yeah, hey, man. Thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. Good luck with your build. <laughs> Come back and give us a flight report, too. <laughs> Let's hear how that goes. Oh, anyway. Honestly, with little tiny wires like this, I don't even always bother tinning them. You have, if you have, if you have material on the, on the board, you know, you don't, it's not strictly required. Okay. So let's see video on the Xylo board. You got ground battery. Is that smart audio? And then audio and video. I guess that is smart audio next to the red. Okay. So video is the third one. That's this guy. Ground, five volt out, and video. Okay, that would normally come from the camera. So this is video right here. And that one will go to video on the flight computer. That, yep, that's this one. Okay, now all that's left is Smart Audio, and that one is right next to the hot wire. So we'll just add that little guy. Smart Audio, you know, that's another one of those things that you guys taught me that. I've been flying FPV for a long time, and I've really just been using... <laughs> make sure to use left-hand solder. Yeah, I. you know, that's the thing about being a lefty. Uh, everything we have to turn it all upside down so it spools from the correct side for us <laughs> anyway um smart audio i didn't even know about it and and uh i've been flying along with the older style you know the dip switches or the button press deals uh, mainly because a lot of the fpv planes we had that i was using didn't have uh they didn't they didn't have uh well, they had an inav i guess or Eagle Tree or Arcbird or Copilot, but I never really looked into Smart Audio. So because of that, I'm on a one of one of the live streams one night and somebody just blurted out. I think it was I think it was Marley Lepo. And he just said Smart Audio. And I said, What what is Smart Audio? What are you talking about? And I thought the reference might have been to something about um getting audio output on a VTX and I I you know in the past I've been like nah I don't really care about audio on VTXs because all it ever sounds like is you know or you hear a motor sound now there are a few exceptions to that you know I've had a couple planes like the reptile uh, by the way the reptile with the DJI unit really sounds good man the motors on that in flight actually sound pretty good and some of the quads now with the DJI because their microphone filtering is actually pretty solid um, so it's somewhat enjoyable on some of these to listen to it a little bit, but not for long. You know, I don't mind hearing a little bit of power and a high speed run and stuff like that, but not for long. That's the thing. Okay. Camera. That's it. Let's see the camera. Um, I think the camera is the last thing to do. So let me make sure I have this aligned, right? And so the camera looks like that's up here and we've got, uh, we've got ground on the right, five volt and video on the left all right well i hate cutting these off but it's got to be done so 
Again, I'm going to try and save a little bit off the top, so if I need to, I can use that pin, but this is a really short wire, so I don't want to get too crazy, although this wire sits right next to that flight control board, so I'm going to try and preserve that pin. That's going to be a royal pain in the ass to solder if I ever have to, but I'll try and preserve it, and then uh, we'll get the camera soldered up here, and then we should be able to put it together. So this is actually moving along pretty well. I wonder... Any, uh, what's the over under on whether or not it all fires up and works out of the gate? Uh, you guys taking bets on that or what's the deal? Can I get in on that? <laughs> all right. So let's see. Oh, 10. So flux, 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 flux. Everybody gets flux. I don't want any trouble from the electricians. All right. So we'll just touch these guys real quick, put a little bit on there. And I need to get a little moisture on my sponge here. Give me just a second. I gotta clean that soldering tip. I'm not happy with the way that looks. I just so happen to have some water, so I had to get some water on that sponge so I can get that soldering tip cleaned up. It's getting a little, getting a little sporty looking. Tell you what, if you guys need a recommendation on a soldering iron, that's another thing that I used to struggle with because I used to get, you know, I I'd, I'd try and shop for the budget option, and um, I kept getting the budget option. I finally, a buddy of mine one time said, listen, man, when it comes to soldering irons, you use them so much in this hobby, just spend the money and get a good one. And um, I asked what his recommendation was, and he said, a Hako. So I got myself a, it is a Hako 88D, 888D? I can't see from here. Hold on. It's an FX888D. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, ever since I got that, I've never looked back. I've been very, very happy with that soldering iron. It just does such a good job. It heats up quick. It maintains its temperature very well. It always works. Um, it's just a good soldering iron. Can't go wrong with a Hako. It cost a little bit of money. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't cheap. It was like a hundred bucks. Um, and I, I, I know that's not crazy expensive, but you know, when you're used to buying soldering irons that are 12... That's not cheap. Okay, so here, just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of using, this is actually a nice, I like the layout here because it lets you put the board on and compare. This really, I, I got to give them props for this because a lot of them, they're not, they're not like this. This is like a little placemat and uh, it's working out really well because you put the board on, you can make sure your alignment works and then you can see right here, I've got yellow, red, and black, right? So it's a very kind of handy little placemat to have to help you do the wiring. I, I got to hand it to them. I'm impressed with that. A lot of the instructions you get, they, they don't qualify. They don't qualify for this. Not even close. So, okay. There's the camera wire. Here is the hot wire. And then here's the black, the ground wire. There we go. Okay, camera's done. Uh, I'm going to give that a couple of twists. And I think I've got all the peripherals on. So let me clean up the workbench just a little bit and get some of the things we're not going to need out of the way. Or at least that I think we're not going to need. But you guys know how that goes. Okay. What tip size are you using? I don't know. It's that size. It's a, uh, it's kind of a, they, 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 I did actually buy a kit of tips. So I have a bag full of them and I have a bunch of different sizes that I can use. 
But here, I don't know if that helps. That's what I've got on this one. So this this seems to work really well for small stuff. It's not it's not very big. I mean it's it's about it's about yeah, it's about the width of a pad, I guess. If I were to if I were to uh put it on there, it's it's about the width of a pad. So what is that, man? Maybe two millimeters? <laughs> but I've got all kinds of different tips. I've got some heavy sledgehammer tips and two to one Robert on the over under. Um so yes, yeah, well, like I said, I've got a whole bag full of them, but when I do small work, this is the one that I tend to gravitate to. Um, but I have a whole bag full of them. I got the points and the wedges, and I've got one that, man, you turn this thing up to 800 and you pop it on there, boy, it, it transfers some freaking heat. I'll tell you that much. All right, let's see. I think that's it for the accessories. Two to one on the over under, huh? Okay. We'll have to uh, see how how it works out. All right. Now I'm going to put it on the quad and I'm going to, since we're not soldering and I think it's important for you guys to see, or you'll probably want to see what's happening on the overall big picture. My plan is to uh, kind of lay this on. Now the one thing to pay attention to is that arrow. Uh, make sure that arrow is pointing forward. If it's not pointing forward, I, you know, on beta flight, you can get away with it, um, but you, you are going to have to make some configuration adjustments. Um, let's see. So there we go. That's on there. Looking, oh, wait. I got a couple of nuts holding that ESC. Yep, I do. Those have to come off. North 49 RC. How you doing, Chris? Thanks for joining. MT, MT head, MT head. <laughs> awesome. Took me a while. I got it. Empty head. I like it. Chisel tip is excellent for this type of stuff. Yeah, it works. Five pound, five pound sledge. No, this is more finite. Zip tie that battery wire while you can. Good call, Robert. Good call, good call, good call. I will do that, my friend. That's a good call. Of course, I'm going to have to get up and get some zip ties, but yes, absolutely a good call, buddy. Thanks for reminding me to do that. Um, Robert's all about that strain relief on the battery mains. You crash and you don't have strain relief on your mains, and I think he's got firsthand experience on what happens, right, Robert? So, yep. Pete Buttons, how you doing? Glad you can make it. Okay. So here we go. Just going to lay this guy on there. And, oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and connect the ESC cable. Definitely make sure you double check this before you just start cramming the cable in. So the pins, I'm looking at the pin headers. The pins are up top. So you make sure when you connect that, that you have that right. Because the, if you if you screw that up, you can you can get around it, but you're gonna be doing a lot more soldering. You know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to solder the uh the wires from the speed controller onto that flight board. And then that's a lot easier. That's a very simple very simple thing to do. Alright. So and now I'm just gonna kinda rough in the wires a little bit where I think I'm gonna want them to go. And that's the camera. That's backwards. There we go. That should go like that. There we go. Wait, I did it again. I did it again. Oh, that's the front, isn't it? Nope, that's the back. I did it again. Oh, man. Did I do that again? I did. I thought that was the front. That's the front. Son of a... You guys know what that means, don't you? Uh, I, I did get it backwards. Son of a... Oh, boy. You guys want to go take 10 while I resolder the ESC wires? I have it backwards. The camera goes on the big part up front. I could have swore it went on the small part in the back. Oh my gosh. Yep, yeah, it goes up front. God dang it. All right. Well, you guys know what has to happen. Has to happen. Has to be done. Can't do it this way. I don't want to. I guess you could, but I don't want to rotate the board. So I'm, I'd rather just desolder it real fast and redo it. I know you guys are rolling your eyes right now going, John, what's wrong with you, dude? I don't know what's wrong with me. Too much caffeine? Too little caffeine?
I'll go through it as fast as I can. Dang it. Got bit. Flip it. I can't believe I got that wrong. I was like focused on getting it right. But I could have swore that camera went on the on this side. I could have swore it went on that side. Damn it. Alright. It won't take long. We'll get it done quick. I know you can rotate the board. I'm not watching the chat right now, but I'm I'm just gonna tell you guys and I'm aware you can rotate the board, but I don't want to. I don't I don't uh think that would all maybe would have created a problem with the camera itself too. So so for that reason, I'm just gonna redo it. Ship's already sailed. Already doing the work. No, this one, this wire is shorter. It goes here. Yeah, if you guys want to take five while I finish this up, that wouldn't be. You're not missing anything. God bless these wires. You didn't need to make it quite that tight. Dang. Boy, I just feel like I'm missing something on this thing. Maybe this one does belong. Maybe this one belongs. I don't know. Can't seem to get this one to reach. That one reaches. Boy, they really made that tight. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. Almost there, almost there, getting there, going quick. Yep, that was a fail. I'm going to check comments in a minute. I'm still heads down right now. I gotta see what the jokes are. I'm wait I'm counting on Robert to give me a zinger for that. So there we go. Alright, one more set and we're done. It's uh, I try and work from the outside in. So the idea is to try and solder in such a way that what you're working on doesn't er doesn't interfere with something that's already been done. That's that's kind of my strategy here. There we go. All right. All right. Odds are one to one now. To me, less soldering is the way to go. So I would have swapped the motors. Well, it wasn't swapping the motors, it was direct. So what happens is the wiring gets to be kludgy when you do that. So, you know, this if this thing is supposed to be aiming this way, then the camera wires are in the wrong spot and the receiver's in the wrong end and it just turns into a pain in the neck. So it's just, uh, yeah, I don't mind soldering and I'd rather do it the right, you know, rather do it the right way. So there we go. We're back in... Just a few minutes. I, I'm sorry, guys. I know that kind of sucks watching. I mean, soldering by itself, watching it is not an enthralling video, but to see it being redone, ugh. okay. 
But anyway, we're we're back now. It's just a minute. It just took a minute. <laughs> All right. And I need to tighten this little screw up because otherwise it's going to fall off. And I probably should be being more careful with that because that is the freaking camera. The last thing I want is a scratch on the camera lens because I'm dropping it. See what I mean about the camera wire? I mean, it's right there. Okay. Come on now. These, uh, yeah, there we go. These little carbon arms are kind of stubborn to fit into those spots, but there we go. That's now we're in business. All right. So there's that Robert suggested getting the, uh, battery zip tied, the main zip tied before going any further. And I think we're at a good spot to do that. So give me just a moment. I'm going to grab some zip ties cause I don't have any on the desk. Give me just a moment. I thought soldering happened with a five pound sledge or something. Is that a, I think that's smelting, Chris. I think that's, you're, you're thinking about smelting, not soldering, right? Isn't that what it is, smelting? So strain relief, it is, it is important. I agree a hundred percent that you have a rough landing and the battery dislodges. The last thing you need is for the mains to pull the friggin power tab directly off the board that would really ruin your day so just to take a minute to do a little strain relief and all i did here was take a zip tie and just just attach that main right there to the board so that way if the battery does come loose um if it comes loose then we don't lose our we don't lose our uh main board connections. So empty head says, did you lock tight the motor screws? Of course, of course. Yep. hundred percent. Always lock tight your motor screws. This isn't actually a build empty head. This is just an upgrade. So this quad has already been flown. Um, it's already been built and flown, but, um, I found a, a neat little control board out there on out on the interweb. So I decided to grab it and try it out. This is the, uh, hi fi on RC uh, F seven board that I found at Pyro Drone, so I just wanted to try it out. And uh, I was also having some weird little behavioral problems with the original board, so I thought that, um, you know, just maybe switching the control board out might give me a better outcome. One thing that the stock board did not have was, uh, it didn't have, it didn't have a, a current meter, and I kind of like that stuff. I don't know, I'm weird. I like I like those kind of details. I know I know it can be done with voltmeter. I get it, but I just like details like that. I like to see what they're doing. So anyway, yeah, this one had the uh, current sensor. It had a barometer. Has had has not not had has has a barometer. It has a uh, uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Not Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth. So. All right, there's that. I'm not, I'm not like I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that. I don't like that. All right. Next is the VTX. I'm just gonna twist that a little bit more, and the buttons for the VTX are out the front, which kind of sucks. Um, the audio jack or the antenna jack is right there so you have to decide how you want this laid out it's a 30 by 30 so you have options but this way that antenna lays down right there and that seems to be a good fit so i think i'm going to go with that and Wait, is this not going to lay down on there? It's not going to lay down on there. 
Oh, I remember. I needed the standoffs, that's why. Okay. I was losing it. So a couple standoffs will compress the uh, the bushings and hold everything nice and secure and give some rubber isolation for the flight computer, which is good. No strain relief, F7, Kakuti, and I watched short out as I walked up. Oh, yeah, that sucks, man. And and you know when that happens, like you go through what I'm going through tonight, right? It's a it's a load of work to fix that. You got to tear not not to mention the cost, especially if you had it working right. You know, if you were content with the way it was working, then you got to you know start from scratch. You got to work it out. Okay, there we go. Now we have that actually is better because that gives me some place for it gives me some place to hide some of these wires underneath there. This receiver just is not playing ball with me tonight. I don't like this. This is not I like I like things to be a little neater. I don't like I don't like it to be crammed like that. So I'm gonna take this off for the moment. And I'm gonna work that out after I get this VTX on because I'm not I'm not feeling that at all. That does not I'm I might cut that and re resolder that. I'm not I just don't like it to be sloppy like that. It's not not my way. And I feel like I'm just kind of stuffing that one in there. So this this one, I'm, I've got it twisted up, and I'm just going to send it to the back like that and let it sit out on the back end of the flight computer. There we go. That's okay. Run smoke stopper before you get it together. Yeah, that's a good idea, Robert. I think I will. I think I will. We'll go ahead and put a couple of these on here, and that's actually a good recommendation. Let me just go ahead and put these on to... Settle that down, and then I'm going to connect the antenna because you don't ever want to run this without the antenna. So I'll connect the uh, MMX connector like that, and then we'll get this antenna on here. Again, you don't you don't really want to run these without without this stuff on there. Okay, so there's that. Let me let me do that. I'm going to get a battery, and I'm going to get a smoke stopper, and we'll power it up and see what happens. So give me just a minute, guys. Okay, so let's make a little room on the desk. I've got the monitor. I figure we'll go ahead and run the monitor too. Um, and we'll see if the uh, we'll see if the camera how the camera does. Ooh, boy, that camera got moved, didn't it? Okay. So here we go. If you guys have never seen a smoke stopper, this is it. So when you plug it in, um, you plug the battery in, you get that yellow light. That means it's ready to work. And then you connect it to the quad and nothing has happened yet because we haven't hit the go button. So you puked in your mouth looking at the messy desk. Yeah, well, you know, it's a work in progress at this point, buddy. I'll clean it up. Don't worry. It'll be spotless before the night's over. I can guarantee you that. Okay, there's the monitor. Steadfast RC, your stream's the best. Well, well, thanks. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. All right, so here we go. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and hit the, uh, which one is it? This one? Hey, no smoke. Oh, look at We got good video, too. Oh. As soon as I hit that and turn the Wi-Fi on, did we blow up my connection? I think, did we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that's happened before. <laughs> that's so. What happens is, uh, you turn on the 5.8 gigahertz and it blows up the Wi-Fi. So you guys will see some lag, but yeah, I, I've I've learned that lesson already. 
um when you when you turn on <laughs> when you turn on the 5.8 gigahertz video it blows up the wi-fi but just so you know the camera did work um <laughs> it's youtube is still saying what the heck is happening here uh air connection is poor let's see if my wi-fi comes back uh let's see are we gonna come back i don't know if you guys can hear me okay or not stay on camera took out stream yeah yeah the camera's on okay so the bottom line is it works but um yeah <laughs> that's funny can you guys hear me someone give me an audio check can you guys hear me okay hello you guys got me i'm seeing video uh, but YouTube is complaining that the data rate is not happy. Let me reload this and see. Not receiving enough. That's funny, man. Are you guys are you guys getting me okay? Let me. That's <laughs> you getting me okay. You hear me okay? Yeah, that's yeah. We learned that lesson when you turn on when you turn on five point eight gigahertz, you blow up the connection. One thing I could do, one thing I can do here. Let me try. I'm just gonna do an experiment since we're here. Let me let me experiment a little bit. I'm gonna switch over to the two point four gigahertz. It should be plenty enough. Seeing no data on YouTube at the moment, but it should pick back up. There we go. Excellent connection. So, all right. So stream should be back in business. Let's try it again. I've never done this before on 2.4. I prefer to opt for the bandwidth, but since we know that that's the cause of this and the second I plug the thing in, we blew up the connection. Let's try it again. Just, I'm just curious to see. I appreciate you guys being patient while I experiment a little bit and teach myself a little bit about live streaming and YouTube. Um, but yeah, we learned, we learned that, uh, we learned that lesson once already. So let's try it again. I'm now on 2.4 gigahertz and I'm going to verify that real fast. Yep. I'm on 2.4. Okay. So hopefully I won't get blown up this time. And it looks like I'm still there and I'm looking for the video. There's the video. So there we go. Got a nice little, got a nice little video feed. There we are. Hello. Hello. Yep. Okay, everything looks good there, and we're in business. So we've got video, got video out. We've got the uh, thing powered up. So all that's left to do now pretty much is button it up. So thanks for being patient with me on that, guys. I appreciate that. I got to remember, if I'm going to fire off a 5.8 gigahertz video <laughs> to, to run the stream on 2.4, and it looks like, two. I think 2.4 is plenty of bandwidth to do this. <laughs> But that's kind of humorous, man, because the I think the first time that happened on a live stream, I'm like, what the hell just happened to my live stream? <laughs> I was focused on on the network and, you know, like what's going on here? I couldn't figure it out. It was a, it was a train wreck. So anyway. All right, let's uh, time to button it up. So let's uh, let's button it up. Um, I do. I do kind of think that I want to I'm kind of feeling like I want to shorten these receiver wires, to be honest. I'm not. I'm not real thrilled about that little gaggle of mess, so I am I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna shorten them. Yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, I, I uh try and avoid saying that out loud because that's his thing and I don't wanna be what is that, an interloper? No, I don't wanna be an interloper. So I try and avoid saying that, but yeah, I do I always like learning stuff. Okay, there we go. That's off. I just I just need to shorten. This is gonna make me crazy dealing with these wires. I don't know how I did it before, but that's gonna make me nuts. So these these have to be cut. It has to has to be shortened. I apologize, guys, for that. But I can't I can't abide this, man. It's just sloppy. It's too much. Don't don't want it. So let me let me just switch over and make sure I keep this in in frame for you guys so you can see what I'm up to. It's the it's the Express L LRS uh, transmitter receive. Sorry, Express. I'm trying to get the microphone in a better spot. It's the Express LRS uh, wires that are so green first, then yellow. They're just too long. They have to be shortened. And when they're shortened, you got a lot less jumble to deal with when you're trying to button things up. Makes it easier. So let's see. What's going on in comments? Still here, David? 
as JB says, you're going to learn. Yep. Yep. That's his thing. I'll let him have that one. Don't, I don't want to horn in on that action. So yeah, if you guys haven't tried Express LRS yet, um, you know, what's funny about that is that FL Engineer was one of the first people that said, hey, are you going to try that? And I had looked at it and I said, you know what? No, I, it's, it's very, <laughs> thanks Robert. It's very science experiment, experimenty to me. And I don't like fooling around uh, when it comes, especially when it comes to long range. I don't like fooling around with science experiments. Um, my preference is to let other people do do that work, you know, and uh, but then the whole thing with Free Sky and the R one sixty one and the one sixty eight and D sixteen, boy, that really kind of graded my grits. <laughs> I, I wasn't happy about that. So, and then on top of that, right after that, uh, Happy Model came out with the uh, with the uh, hardware and the and the uh, firmware are already installed. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, you know what? They're, they're starting to get serious about this now because now they've got an off the shelf offer that you can just buy and go without having to install. You know what I mean? Without having to install firmware or flash firmware. So that's when I thought, yeah, they're at a point now where it'd be worth considering or looking into it because some, some people are going to be interested in that as a, as an option. Um, so Anyway, all right, ground first. So uh, this RX is 915. However, Michael, I do have uh, two, again, with the too long. I do have 2.4 on the way, 2.4. I actually have the receiver or the transmitter for 2.4 already. That's in hand. I am simply waiting for the uh, transmitter, or sorry, the receiver to show up. So... Yep, that's gonna be a thing, man. And you know those receivers—they're priced right. They're like they're twenty bucks. Where I really, where I really kind of hope they solve it is they need to add a. There's got to be a PWM option. That's what I. That's one of the things I think they're gonna have to do uh, if they really want to get traction. Because while I know there's a large contingent right of beta flight and flight computer users that can get away with SBUS. No, that's not everybody. I mean, they're miss they're missing out, right? If they don't if they don't do a PWM option, they're going to miss a big chunk of the market. Um, and I do think that once the once the uh, I do think that once the uh, YouTubers get a hold of it and start you know start running the the tests that they're gonna they're going to uh, you know, it's going to start becoming more and more prevalent. I can't see which one is... I have to bring the map back out because I can't see which one is which here. Um, okay. RX. That's green. And that's next to the red. Okay. So it's green. But anyway, in the bottom line for me is I'm, I'm really excited about Express LRS because... Um, I, I'm ma mainly because it's like inversely proportional to how happy I am with free sky. You know, free sky is being, they're being kind of rude. And, um, I think these guys are, they're giving us an alternative and it, the timing is perfect. It's, it's not great timing for free sky <laughs> because there's a lot, there's a lot of people out there really kind of annoyed with the way they're behaving and right at the time that that happened, there, the, you know, an alternative has been produced, right? So, yep. So I'm just waiting for the 2.4 receiver. And when I get that, man, um, and that's soon. That is in the States. It's traveling. It is, it is in the States and traveling. Sorry. I got to get back on frame for you guys. I keep pulling it off frame. It's a, it's a never ending battle. The, uh, uh, do I have that the right way? Yes, I do. Okay. Never ending battle. It's always something new. Is this a different size? They are different sizes. 
What? How can those be different sizes? Hmm. I'm missing one. I can't spot it. My messy desk. Okay. All right, that's buttoned up. I'm missing. I'm missing one nut. I don't know what the heck I did with it. All right. Well, I'll have to dig it out later. Maybe it has. Nope, wrong size. What power level is a TX? Uh, are you running a fan on the model? No, you don't need to run a fan. If you don't need, you don't need to run a fan if you keep the. Uh, power level down and i'm not really running these like down range michael so uh as far as my understanding is you only need a fan if you go above if you go like one water above and i'm running mine at like 10 10 milliwatts uh you know i'm just this is a the you know this has only got an analog system on it so i'm not flying this one far um i, I just keep this one pretty close by but uh yeah just uh 10 10 milliwatts is fine Okay. All right. I think we're going to be... Oh, is this going to not fit over my capacitor? Boy, that's close. Oof. There we go. All right. There we go. Yahtzee. We are in business. We're back, back in business. Okay. So the antenna, the VTX... Pigtail is connected and snapped in there nice and firm. All we need to do now is get the uh, GPS out of the way. We'll get the camera set up to take the top plate, and then we can put the top plate on, and we're getting close to buttoning this little guy up. So there we go. Uh, 10 mil. Yeah, Robert. Yeah, I was amazed when I said Robert sent me that video in the first place, and the guy, uh, what's his name, Robert, that flew out that far? But yeah, the record right now is uh, 40 kilometers on 10 milliwatts. So, you know, if you're flying at the park, it's like you really, <laughs> you just don't, you know, you just don't need more than that. Um, it's kind of ludicrous what this thing is capable of uh, on the power levels that they're using. Man. I, I mean, I'm, that's, that got my attention right away. When I saw that, I was pretty impressed. And it wasn't one of these BS videos. Yeah, Wes. Yeah, that guy. Is he Scottish or English? Um, but yeah, he went out and did that long range flight and he ran that thing at at a 40 kilometers, <laughs> 10 milliwatts. That is just absolutely ludicrous, man, to think that that they can that that technology is available to us. Um, kind of makes you scratch your head about what's possible, right? Especially when you think about what, you know, like, I kind of wonder what's going on in the 5.8 gigahertz space. Like if they're doing, if they're doing 40 kilometers on, yeah, the bearded one, that's right. That's him. If they're doing 40 kilometers on 10 milliwatts, right? How, how what's next for 5.8? You know, I almost kind of wonder when there's going to be an express LRS 5.8 kind of scenario, right? No, that wasn't smart. Probably should have the gps wire through first right but yeah and just so you guys know I, I fully intend i just haven't gotten to it yet but i fully intend on making a gps mount for this i, I don't like having it sit out here kind of looks janky but i just haven't gotten to that yet i will though i promise and when i do i'll make the parts available i think i'll be able to use the gps mount that i made for the diatome roma on here and i'm going to try my new double-sided fancy lpt tape yeah, only reason he quit is because his video couldn't go farther. That's right. That's what I mean. When are they gonna? They, they you got to think that's next, right? I I would love to see, I'd love to see five point eight get a like a Laura makeover, or you know what else would be cool is if they would do. So think about running Express LRS at nine fifteen, right? If you have Express LRS at nine fifteen, um. 
what about just running um, LoRa at a 2.4 on a video transmission system, right? How cool would that be? So here's the new LPT tape. We'll see how we'll see how this works. Um, you guys weren't around earlier. I was telling telling everyone about this uh, about this uh, website or YouTube channel called Project Farm, where the guy does all kinds of testing. You know, he tries to find the best the best thing in a category, and it's normally you know mechanical construction, adhesives, you know, oils, stuff like that. And he did one on double sided tape, and this this is called LPT double sided foam tape. You can get it on Amazon, and uh, it basically beat everything else by a, by a margin. By a margin. Oops, wrong way. That goes on like this. Okay, quad is put together. Let's. Uh, I need to make a small adjustment on the camera because it's crooked. And after that, we will get into beta flight. And I'll bring, there we go, camera. That's better. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let me, um, why don't we, you guys, let, let's do, let's take five. Let's take five. And I'm going to, I got to clean up because Robert, you know, Robert's screwing with me, but he, he knows I can't take this. <laughs> this is, let me, I have to clean up. <laughs> So let me clean up my desk. We'll take five. Go smoke them if you got them. And uh, we'll come back and we'll get into beta flight and take a look. There it is. All right. Take five.
Okay, that's better. Not great, but better. So I cannot, Robert, Robert, see Robert's been around a while. He knows I can't, I can't freaking tolerate messy. I hate it. I have to, I'm, I'm fiddly about being clean. Okay, so we're connected now. Now let me show you first. Um, yeah, class is in session. Yeah, we're back. We're back. So let me show you first. I'm going to show you beta or speedy B. So let me just get the app open real quick. And I wanted to show you guys this one because it's really cool. Like, okay, so uh, I just have the props. I'll set those aside. We don't need those. So here we go. I'll zoom in a little. And all I've done is I've connected the quad via USB-C to the computer. That's all. So I'm not going to mess with the computer just yet. In fact, I'm just going to set this off. You guys can see it's connected and I got lights blinking. Okay. So we'll hit Bluetooth and you see how it says found Hi-Fi NRC. We hit connect and there we go. <laughs> like, like, uh, um, let me turn the brightness on this down a little bit. That'll help. Okay. So in here you, you can see you've got, you've got control, you've got control over the quad. We can, we can do things. We can edit, you know, PIDs. We can edit our fail safe procedures. We can, we can do things. Um, what was the link? It was called, let me, here, hold on. Let me give you a link for that. If you guys are going to use it, let me give you an affiliate link at least to use, right? Um, give me just a second. I'll pop that up here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Project Farm. Did I finish telling you guys about that? I think, I've, I know I've mentioned it a couple times. So, um, yeah, there it is. I got it. Here, I got it. Let me give you, let me give you an affiliate link for it. That way you get the tape and I get a nickel for telling you about it. There we go. There we go. Use that. Use that for your, for your tape. That's the stuff that I got anyway. Okay. So anyway, back to the phone. Uh, so this is a speedy B app. And again, it's, it's kind of, you know, on the phone, I don't know that I'd want to do an entire configuration on the phone. Um, it, it, it's better than nothing at the field, I can tell you that. And obviously, you know, the Bluetooth works. Um, so, and then you can go in the configuration and check the motors and, and uh, you know, set up your, your battery information, your capacity. You can do your calibration stuff. So it's useful, especially if you want to do things like make, maybe make some changes to your PIDs. You know, if, you, if you're in here and you say, you know what, that uh, integral on, on roll is a little too high, I'd like to change that. You, you can do that. So very handy. And you don't even need, you don't need to do anything with the craft. I would suggest disarming it because when you're done, you're going to save and reboot it. Um, so that's it. I wanted to show you that because um, that's kind of new to me. I mean, I, I've been aware of the technology. I've just never used it. And um, I've, I was, I was actually pretty impressed with that. The first time I got a chance to experience that was on the, on the flywoo Mr. Croc. So for, for that reason, you know, that was another reason for me to, to be interested in getting, uh, getting a hold of, um, Bluetooth modules and boards, you know, probably, I'll probably going forward, I'll look for boards with Bluetooth. And if everything else is equal, you know, I'll get the one with the Bluetooth. So I just, I just wanted to show that to you guys. I thought you might enjoy seeing how that works and it's not perfect. You know, the interface has some issues. It's not perfect. They've got some scaling issues. The buttons get in the way of each other. So you find yourself having to turn the phone and, and move it, manipulate it and all that stuff. So anyway, um, not perfect, but like I said, when you're at the field, if you don't have a computer with you, uh, it's really nice to be able to use it. Okay. I'm going to switch into the workspace and I'm going to turn off the display capture. So we get rid of that and I'm going to turn on beta flight. So you guys can see beta flight. So give me just a second and there you go, except it's not scaled correctly. And there we go. That should be scaled a little better now. And I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and bring up the chat window. I'll bring it up. We'll see if we can get away with the chat window, if it works or not. There we go. I'll leave that down there and I'll just, I'm going to scan, I'm going to scale beta flight. There we go. If that's not big enough for you guys to see, let me know. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll rearrange it on the screen, but I figured we do it that way. And that way um, we could see the, see the chat while I, while we take a look at beta flight and see what's happening 
and see what's happening in here. So, oops, give me a second. I'm still working to scale this there. There we go. All right, now I need to pop the chat up so I can see it. And uh, we'll take a look at Betaflight and see what Betaflight says. I do want to run the motors, make sure the motors are running the right direction. So we'll do that too. Anyway, um, of course, Betaflight is not wide in there. That's better. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to do this on the fly. Okay, I realize the beta flight window is overstepping the chat window. There we go. All right, so I've crunched the chat window down a little bit, but we'll be able to see at least what you guys are saying. That's what I'm after. I want to be able to see what you guys are saying. Okay, so beta flight. Let's, um, let's connect the battery. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and connect a four cell battery. And what I, what I want to do is check the motor rotation. So we'll do that by going into motors and then saying, I understand because I've got my motors disconnected. And let's see, motor number one should spin. And I did check this. This is the way the Tyro was originally set up too. So this is inward rotation. So num number one should ro rotate clockwise. So we'll spin that one first. And that is spinning clockwise. Good. So number two should spin anti-clockwise. So we'll check that. So number two should be spinning uh, anti-clockwise. Okay. So let's spin that. Ah, oh, of course. Wrong way. Hey, you know what, though? I can easily change those wires. So I'm going to just do that. Let's just do that right now. Those wires are easy to change. So let's just do it. I'll switch over to the big camera and let you guys see the big camera. Um, you can also do it in the ESC software, but this is real, real easy to change. It's right. It's right here. So rather than worry about it in the ESC software, I'm just going to go ahead and make the change right here. Although I did... While I was cleaning up, I shut my iron off, so I gotta give it just a moment to heat up. So, anyway, motor direction. Kinda gotta make sure that's right. Okay, I'm just gonna change these two. It doesn't matter which two you change. I'm just gonna take these two and change them. There's one loose. Hopefully, we won't have to do much of this. Again, you can change this in software. Not that big of a deal uh, to do it. Uh, with BL Heli Suite, you can reverse these, but... I mean, I, I can probably get through the soldering almost as fast as I could have launched the software and made the change. I'm already done, so that's it. So I'll switch back over to Betaflight. We'll get connected to Betaflight again, and, and we'll, uh, we'll check. So let's see. Let's go back to this screen, and we'll go back to the motors. And I know I, know I don't have the camera going. I can't fit everything on the screen, so I'll just tell you what it's doing. So I'm turning that on and we'll spin number two and that, yep, that's now anti-clockwise. Number three should also be anti-clockwise. Well, let's turn two off. Okay, three is anti-clockwise and that means four should be clockwise. Ah. Oh. Four is going the wrong way. So that wasn't too bad. Two out of four going the wrong way. So two, the, the even ones are going wrong. So let me switch over to the big screen and I'll just, I'm just going to solder again. It, like I said, they're so readily available. There's no reason not to do it. I'll just take the two that are close on number four here. And boy, that's going to be a challenge. This is where being a lefty kind of sucks right now. Okay, there's one. I need I need a little help. I can't get my finger in there. Try and push that into frame a little. There we go. All right, you come on, come on, let go. There we go. Okay.
I really wish these wires were just a little bit longer. All right, there's one. And there's two. All right, that should be the end of that. So motor rotation should be right now. So we'll just connect that for beta flight, put a battery on here. We'll switch back over to the beta flight window and we'll run the motors real quick and make sure number four is going the right way and that's going clockwise. So good. All right. Motors are done. Um, I'm going to grab the transmitter. We need to check and make sure the, the receiver is working. So give me a second. Okay, um, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's a way for me to get this camera on here or not. I don't think it's going to fit. There's the camera, I guess. Oh, well, you guys aren't chatting much, so I'm, how about if I turn the chat on and leave the camera, turn the chat off and leave the camera on. How does that sound? You guys all right with that? And if I see anything illuminating, I will, I will make mention of it. How's that sound? <laughs> I will make mention of it. So let me just try and resize this camera a little bit. Hey, why aren't you resizing? There we go. Come on now. There we go. All right, there we go. Now you guys can see at least. So I know Robert was really looking forward to seeing this radio. Uh, <laughs> I know Robert was looking forward to seeing this radio tonight. Precious, right, Robert? Okay, let's grab the right model. And we will check the receiver, make sure the receiver works. Kind of important. So let's see, quads. I'm using this one because this is the one that I have the uh, Express LRS module in. The throttle's idle. And of course, I don't. I've got RSSI. It said RSSI. You know what? Just. I'm just going to reboot it real fast, just in case. Telemetry lost. Telemetry lost. You know what? I forgot. This this isn't my original configuration. I have to go in and change it to Crossfire. I forgot. <laughs> I kept thinking. I kept thinking this is Tyro. Okay, so let's uh, let's see ports. I'm going to check and make sure I connected it. The receiver is on the correct port. So in the book, they said to use port number two. And I have UR number two. And look, it's not no serial RX on number two. So now that's enabled. And now we need to go under um, receiver. And it is AETR. So that's good. I'll save that. And then I think it's, where is it, under configuration that they put Crossfire? I wonder why they don't put this in the same place. It seems like this should be, this should be on the receiver page. I don't That's one of the things I don't understand. They separate things out. It just seems to me like they should be in the same place. So let's try the receiver again now. Nope. Nothing doing. Okay. So let's see. I hope I don't have those friggin' wires backwards. I'm gonna have to check them in a minute, but let's see. Uh, AETR, that's correct. Um, configuration. Did you stay on Crossfire? You did. And I guess ports. Oh, I didn't save, it didn't save. So I'll change that. It's UART2, right? Yep, UART2 will do a save and reboot. And then receiver. Hey, there we go. Okay. So receiver works. Motors work. Um, that's it. I'm not going to bore you guys with the rest. I'll do, I'll do my, my uh, common config. If you got, I, I guess I could show you the common config. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll show it to you real quick. But whenever I do, uh, I, I kind of learned real quick with beta flight, you know, when you start getting into quads, one of the things you kind of want to do is this, uh, that I wanted to do anyway is this thing called a common config. Let me go ahead and I'll just show it to you. In fact, I'm having a hell of a time with the mouse. Okay. So let me just show this to you real quick in case you haven't seen this yet. Um, 
I'll have to share this window. Give me a second and I will share this with you. So window capture, common config. Okay, there we go. All right, you guys can see that now. This is my common config. So what I've done is I've started taking this, uh, you know, this configuration stuff that I do for all of my quads and I put it into a single text file. And the idea behind this is that I can um, take this information and, and put it into every quad that I fly no matter what. So for example, all my modes, I always want my modes to be the same. I want my RX fail process to be the same. I want my OSD adjustments to be the same. I want everything to be the same. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to put that information in the CLI and just, just paste that in and then hit enter. And there's a save at the end and that reboots it. And what that does is now all my modes are set for me. So my arm switch is set, my angle, aux mode, uh, angle mode, acro mode, return to home are all set. Uh, my GPS is not showing up. I don't know why, I'll figure that out later. I see a light, so it's wired correctly. I probably just have to turn it on. Um, but anyway, yeah, there it is. And it's U blocks. And I'll do auto baud. And I'll use Galileo. And I'll do auto detect and then save and reboot. And anyway, um, so that common configuration, it doesn't matter what quad I'm flying, everything else, everything's the same. You know what I mean? That's everything about it is the same. So GPS is on five, and I'm guessing on ports, I don't have five GPS. Nope, no GPS. There, now I have GPS. So we'll save that and reboot it. And hopefully now the GPS hopefully will show up. Yeah, I don't see any light. I see the, li I see the light blinking on the GPS itself, but it's not showing up in there for some reason. So GPS. And did I connect it? Mm, yep, I connected it to five. Well, I'll worry about that later. I don't want to bore you guys with that kind of stuff. It's kind of easy to troubleshoot that. Um, let's see. I see you didn't show that sissy radio at the field. I'm guessing the boys rock a and then he would have teased you out of the gate. Man, I'll tell you what. They all work for me. You didn't know that, Robert? Come on, man. No, the, I, I wasn't flying the Tyro, so I was already carrying enough stuff. So I brought the, uh, I actually brought the, I brought the Radio King. I was trying to sell the Radio King today. I don't know why. Um, no, no, I was, I put it out there for 50 bucks, but see, that's the thing, man. At a AMA field, no one knows, no one knows OpenTX. They don't get interested in it. But anyway, yeah, all that's left to do on this is work out. I, I need to test the smart audio and I need to, uh, make sure that works. I put, need to put the VTX table in. And um, that's about it. So this thing is pretty much pretty close to being ready to go. Just got to work out the GPS. So that's it, guys. Well, listen, hey, I, I think, uh, man, that's two, two plus hours. I think that's probably enough. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me just to have a little hanger night and, and work on uh, goofing off with the equipment. And uh, hopefully you pick something up or maybe learn some tricks or if nothing else, you just got to hang out and enjoy a chat and watch uh you know watch more rc work and hopefully that was enjoyable to you radio king not the flagship of the fleet no 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 yeah the radio king i don't really have any use for that uh that one's gotta go anybody has any ideas on what i can do with the radio king let me know but that's that one's not for me that one's gonna go <laughs> that's one i need to unload well i appreciate you guys robert thanks uh i mean it looks like maybe everyone else fell asleep <laughs> so I think I'll let you guys go. Thanks for hanging out with me on a Saturday night while we played around with the quad. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for the questions and the engagement and all that stuff. And I'll catch up with you soon. That's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.